Well, we're here, uh, another stupid night in a stupid place that, um, you know, nobody cares about. I don't care about this place. I wish this place would just, would just die. I, I hate this channel. I hate everything about it. Uh, I hate being here in this channel. Uh, but um, there's really, you know, there's not that many other places really to hang out with, you know too old for Mickey Mouse and Disney World and, and IHOP, I guess, and and I'm too young to, I don't know, sit around at bingo all night and, I don't know, go on cruises, so, you know, it's, it's a weird place, you know, as a non-451, you know, between, like, you know, 30 years old and, I guess, 50, I guess, you know, we're, you know, where you still have your, I guess, your youth or strength. But at the same time, like, I don't know. doesn't matter. The point is this. The point is this. Like, not dead yet, right? And um, still got tremendous balls. And, uh, you know, you got to do what you got to do. You know? So it is what it is. This is a, an odd cigar in many ways. And I'll explain. Um, strange size. Um, in some ways you could think of like a work of art, but it's not, and, and I will say this, and I'm dumping on the cigar here, uh, it, it, it's nowhere near the same level of beauty or construction, um, as let's say, uh, a Hemingway signature, or Hemingway work of art, or any of the front in line. Um, uh, and that's not a dig at Gurkha, but, uh, I mean, yeah, this does have a little bit of a cap there, but, um, the transition to this strange tip here at the end clearly it's just like they did it and just like slap some tobacco around the bottom half almost like a bottom cap if that makes any sense like like yeah we're, we're, we don't so I'm, I'm not this is just me like observing the cigar right so i mean uh, as an avid fuente uh, cigar smoker uh, and my fuente fanboy because you know uh, i don't like their sun grown i don't like their Hemingway sun grown so therefore clearly it's not like well just Whatever they make, I'm going to tell you to buy it. Uh, what I'm trying to say is, uh, I think I picked this up today for uh, $9.50 at a shop. So uh, the 12 is generally, give or take, the cheapest of the bunch, but not by much. You know, now, of course, what's, I don't know my lounge pricing, maybe what state you're in, of course, you know, things could happen. And, you know, your Democratic leaders, of course, would decide to, you know, double your cigar price for the good of the homeless people that need to uh, smoke fentanyl and also um, the illegals coming in that need that $5,000 gift card to buy Air Jordans and AirPods. So you're gonna fucking pay for it. But there's just, I just can't stress it enough. So who, who's the bitch? Who's the bitch? You, you gotta look at yourself. And if you're a tax paying American going to work, you're a fucking bitch. You're a fucking piece of shit bitch. And people just walking right through, getting Gatorades at the, and the Air Jordans at the gate, you know, in Texas. And um, getting bussed into everywhere else. Not going to work. Getting hotels, motels, catered food. They were just saying, well, but they don't always like the catered food. So we're just going to give them cards with like 10000 on it and, or 1000 a month, 12000 a year, tax-free. So they can buy their own food in their free motel, hotel. Airbnb, whatever the fuck. And meanwhile, like, you're getting a $50 late fee because your rent was two days past the 8th of the month. And you're like, can I catch a break? And like, no, you, you paid your rent two days late. So that's a $50 late fee, which is going to affect your credit score. I just can't stress it enough. This entire model of this, this entire fucking country is imploding at a rate that I, I continually tell my father that you are the last last fucking generation that got to just normally, you know, go to work, retire, put into your 401k and your pension and your social security, and then enjoy yourself for 5, 10, 20 years, depending how healthy you stay, and, you know, enjoy your retirement until you pass. Um, that shit is over. There is no more middle class. 75 grand is homeless a year. You're homeless. You're fucking homeless. So unless you have a dual income with someone else, you know, uh, so you got to make 150 grand to have a one-bedroom apartment 
or a two bedroom apartment. And even then you're not balling. What the fuck happened? Oh, I know what happened. I know what happened. They're just de destroying America from within. The gig is up. The gig is uh, I can't str I can't stress it enough. I, I I can't you know. Imagine people watching the Roman Empire at the end, and that last generation of older people that enjoyed its splendor, and they're like, "Come on, things will get better." And the the, the younger generation from the last the end of the Roman Empire, are like, what "The fuck is this? Like, we we're not we didn't get the same to live in the same place with the same opportunities." Is the opportunities? I, okay, when I was growing up, if you had a job, any job, you definitely had an apartment. Back in the eighties, in the nineties, eighties, nineties, if you had a job or any decent job, you could have a small house somewhere. Not even in a great neighborhood, but still. You got like firemen and cops and teachers that like can't even afford apartments in the cities they work in. What the fuck happened? Oh, I know what happened. By design. And this cigar was by design. This is the Gurkha. <laughs> Richie, could you try this again with just a little more positivity? Hi. I'm Big D, also known as Richie. I'm Big D Richie. Your mother knows me. Um, the Gurkha, age 12 years, allegedly. Now, it says on the website, because it's, it's not all 12-year tobacco. It says on the website that it has it has tobacco that is aged up to 12 years so that means it's it's, it's it's a it's a lawyeristic sleight of hand it has some tobacco that's 12 years old but it's not a 12 year puro or it would say that and it's not uh but whatever so could we smoke this fucking thing yeah ecuadorian oscuro which is you know that's interesting you don't normally see that on a cigar, a, a very dark Ecuadorian wrapper. So that's exciting, right? It's kind of kind of got somewhere between a soft and a medium pack. Like a soft medium, so not extremely hard fill. And I think with this odd shape on this cigar, I think it would be kind of hard to really pack this thing. And once again, this is not no Fuente. Uh, and I'm not knocking that. What I'm saying is Fuente is expert at oddball shapes. You know, their rollers are, are the best. In my opinion, at oddball shapes. The rest of it is Nicaraguan, so it's listed as like a medium, medium plus. Although it has blend strength, 98%. I don't know what, I don't know what that means. I don't know if it's a blood type or, um, tr we're not going to read that shit right now. We're good for what? Yeah, the American dream is fucking over. I'm going to call it right here. In the next three years, this country will be in or out of after a civil war slash economic collapse slash EMP slash total uh, American dollar collapse slash going to some type of electronic bullshit. You're going to be fucking Venmo and bitches to suck your dick. I can't stress it enough. Bitcoin. You're going to need that. To get bitches, you're going to need that Bitcoin, baby. Bitcoin. The only thing that's miss missing is the C, the cash. Bitcoin. B I T C. Bitcoin. <laughs> Fucking literally, it's right in your face. Bitcoin. Bitcoin. It's gonna be a bitch. <laughs> uh, Bitcoin, motherfucker. Stronger than I thought off the bat. Kind of like a heavy medium plus. Um, and hmm, between 70 75% darkness. And how do I explain this? It's very dark for Ecuadorian. But like if you had some true dark Nicaraguans wrapper or a very dark uh, Connecticut broadleaf, you know, etc. Mexican San Andreas, Maduro. That would be darker than this. However, this is an Oscuro. People understand Maduro Oscuro is not a color in a sense. It's a process. And depending on what tobacco you're working with, right? So this is an Ecuadorian Oscuro. This is very dark for an Ecuadorian uh, wrapper, tobacco. Um, do you understand what I'm trying to say? So when something's a Maduro, it's like, well, why is it different shades of different colors of Maduro? 
Did I just explain that to you? You got it. I would say that the strength is good on this. Uh, heavy, medium, plus right now. I feel like it's going to pick up. Kind of a little stronger than I than I, than I remember this cigar. Of the four, you have the 21, you have the 18, you have the 15, and now you have the 12, which is the newest one. But it's been out for probably who knows how long. Seven years, more. I don't know. Who gives a shit? Um, that uh, is what it is. It's not bad. It's not great. It's not bad. It's better than good. I'd put this right now between a good to very good experience. Um, it's not going to be your favorite cigar. It's not going to lie to you. Finish is kind of long, kind of strong. It feels like a, a strong, dark uh, Ecuadorian type cigar that's being pushed by uh, Nicaraguan. That's what they're saying. And then it's kind of, it's not like a, a mysterious type of blend, uh, but, but I kind of like what they're doing. Um, in some ways, was this the grandfather to the uh, rare pink with the Ecuadorian wrapper and, and Nicaraguan fillers? I mean, did Fuente copy the Gurkha 12 year cellar reserve? I think so. <laughs> Take it with a grain of salt, Carlito. So it is what it is. Yeah, that was a joke, but um. Kind of a Fuente size, for kind of a Hemingway size, kind of. And um, Ecuadorian wrapper and Nicaraguan fillers, I mean, the rare pink does have some. I mean, it has Dominican too. I'm making a joke, a joke. I'm making a joke. It's like a joke, but I'm being serious. That's a joke. Are you joking? Are you joking? I'm joking. I'm joking. It's like a working joke. Fucking jerk. I'm jerking it. I'm jerking it. I'm not jerking it. I'm in a public place. So it is what it is. So. Right there I picked up to medium full. So this is a strong cigar. It is uh, probably not for newbies. And I would say this is probably one of the stronger uh, Gurkhas. Gurkhas are not known for some like ass kicking blends overall. Especially their brick and mortar. I'm not going to go into the myriad shit of all their internet stuff. But from the, I'm not saying, so if it's, if you can't get it at a brick and mortar, then probably don't buy it on the internet. If you could buy it on the internet and you also see it at a store, it's probably a good one. Uh, because they're, they're, as of late, let's say the past, who knows how many years, seven years, maybe longer, uh, they started revamping their uh, brick and mortar and um, separating themselves from a lot of their online bullshit that they made deals with Cigar International, which was what it was. Draw smoke production's good. Oh no, I'd say the cigar's on route to but like a 4.5. The pros is uh, it's a good cigar for the price point, nine dollars at a store um, to have something that's kind of unique as far as size. Okay, and you know the band is solid, um, and it's a five by fifty eight, but it's not it's not going to feel like a big cigar because it's tapered here, so you kind of almost lose an inch, and you kind of. Lose like a half inch with this tapering here. So in reality, it feels like like a four and a half inch cigar. That's a 58. And it's not true 58 all the way through. So who the fuck knows? It, 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 it's it's a strange size. But you're going to get an hour with it. Very long, heavy finish. It's kind of oily and buttery. Kind of spicy. Um, slightly earthy as well. Um, putting out good smoke output. I, although I can't tell you right now what the message is of the cigar. It doesn't have one of those kind of profiles where you're like, oh, easy to love. Or oh, I know exactly what they're trying to do here. I, I, I can't. Whereas like on the 15th and the 18th is, and the 21, I think those blends, uh, 21 is like literally, 21 is a great creamy cigar. If you like, I'm not even joking. If you like David Off or a Zeno type cigar. I can't stress enough the the Gurkha 21. You're gonna laugh. <laughs> no, that's solid. 
if you're liking a luxury medium strength cigar with a light shade wrapper, the Gurkha 21 is is it, completely underrated, and uh, you should definitely check out some of the cigars. And whatever the, the haters are gonna hate, I mean, dude, Richie doesn't lie. Um, this uh, this I think uh, of the four is, is is the weakest one as far as the blend. However, it is the strongest one in the profile, um, but um, it's not bad. Oh, yeah, I mean, a heavy, medium, full. Oh, my God, like, tons of cedar just came into the mix, but I mean, such a copious amounts of cedar that you're like, it's, it's, it's like different types of cedar. You're like, holy shit. It's, just, it's like a gangbang of cedar. It's just like, yeah. It's like it's just quadruple penetration of cedar. That was too much wood. The no way your mother likes it. Okay, wow. I finally kind of opened up right there. We're almost at the full 58. We're at a heavy medium full. It's quite impressive how strong that got with copious amounts of wood. I mean, too much wood. But hey, I mean, if you like a lot of fucking two by fours up your ass, you're going to like this cigar. Uh, with a dark Ecuadorian kind of vibe, it's very buttery and oily and very spicy. Lots of black pepper. It has kind of a creamy texture, but not a lot of sweetness on this cigar. Ecuadorian wrap cigars generally are not known for tons of sweetness, and I can't stress that enough. Well, we're deep into the cigar. I flicked the ash off, who cares, right? I mean, the construction was good. Smoked through, you know, and um, no major complaints about that. Draw was good. Um, so, like, you know, I mean, in some ways, you know, I understand Gurkha's bad rap of the past for a lot of their internet-only bullshit. At the same time, with a lot of their current production stuff, you know, I don't understand the massive hate for stuff that's not bad. So, I, I, listen, separate the wheat from the chaff. You separate the Gurkha from the Gurkha. You know what I'm saying, though? So, I agree with that. In the past, they made some horrend horrendous, you know, almost malicious, you know. 15-pack of high-end Gurkha cigars for only 10.99. Yo, they used to be a thousand dollars. Only the king of Persia himself would smoke this cigar with the Pope. And you're like, what? Yes, the new Persian Pope, all new Gurkha. You're like, wow, I didn't know that uh, Arabs and Catholics got along so well. They deal with Gurkha, the Rolls Royce. And you're like, are we exaggerating here? I feel like Gurkha should just rename himself. Exaggeration, and you're like, but that's the past. So, this 12 year is not a bad cigar, it's not like some great cigar, but it's not bad. It's, a, it's gonna be a 4.5, so it's a solid cigar that can be enjoyed. It's of good quality, um, and nothing bad to say about it. It is a darker and stronger for a Gurkha, but not in a traditional sense, like a, like a Maduro, like, like you think, like a Brazilian Maduro, or like a a Connecticut Broadleaf, like a darker wrapper. So it's like Ecuadorian, it's like a very dark brown wrapper, if that makes any sense, but it is an Oscuro. Uh, but so it's, it's dark for Ecuadorian, if that makes any sense. I'm at almost full strength here at the end. I have nothing bad to say about it. Like, it's, it's not a piece of shit. So, like, take your blinders off and... Trust Richie, because only because Richie doesn't lie. And I'm telling you the truth. If this was a piece of shit, you would know. I, my emotions, I can't lie. Like, if this thing sucked, like, this thing... I believe I can fly. It would just be gone. Finish the strong, long. It's between 70 and 75% darkness. Uh, it's got a good amount of earth. Tons of black pepper right now. Copious amounts of cedar. I mean, a lot of wood. This is the Woody Harrelson. This is the fucking... You're in the woods with this cigar. There's a lot, a lot of fucking wood. I can't stress that at all. It still has an oily, buttery uh, texture to it. Without, you know, which makes it almost feels kind of creamy. But it, it doesn't have a massive um, sweetness to it. Or even really a, a little sweetness. So, I mean, I guess if you want to ding one thing, you know. But uh, generally speaking, cigars like, like an Ecuadorian, you know, for example. Like, I believe they have Melanio V. 
and if he, I believe, Oliva stuff, um, I don't think they have a lot of sweetness. Unless you go to Milano V. Maduro, but that's not an Ecuadorian wrapper. It was a good, not amazing, but a 4.5, a solid cigar, that for $9, I, I have no regret purchasing this. And the overall experience was different enough that at least I gotta give Gurkha credit where they have credit to do their solid brick and mortar stuff because, because they have no loyalty and they'll work with a lot of different brands, PDR, Leva, uh, Placencia, whoever the fuck else. I can know, sir. Um, they, um, their blends can have massive variety as far as compare it to like the core of the blend, meaning, you know, generally speaking with Fuente, because Fuente makes their cigars, and, and they will sometimes work with and leave a wrapper or whatever. But overall, it's like you're never going to have a Fuente that feels like a Padron, and you're never really going to have a Padron because they work with Padron, really feel like a Fuente. So, but, you know, so the point is, uh, so Gurkha is kind of like a shapeshifter. Gurkha's trans, transcendental. Transformative. Transformers. I can say that in this day and age. Robots. Premium cigars in disguise. And it's almost refreshing, these uh, cellar reserves, because um, they are unique in a sense. Uh, you know, they're not boring cigars. And I like... The lineup of the cell reserves. I think the twelve might be might be my least favorite, but it's still a good cigar. So that means something. Like the fifteen, the class of your fifteen is fucking phenomenal. Is that a Criollo wrap? I don't remember. But then they have the fifteen Maduro. I think it's a Brazilian Escuro Matafina. I think no, a, a Arapica. Arapica, wrap. I think. And then you got the eighteen, which is phenomenal. I think that was the Criollo. I don't remember. Somebody had the Criollo. And then uh, you had the 21, which is the best one. Not the strongest, but that's that was the best blend. So all in all, heavy on the smoke, heavy on the flavor, great draw, long, heavy finish. Not sweet, okay? And it is the strongest in the cellar reserves. So for most guys, if you're not going to try this because it's Gurkha... Like, I don't care. Okay, so just, you know, pass. You probably never watched this video, right? The bottom line is, though, you know, a good cigar is a good cigar. And since Gurkha's been really working on their brick-and-mortar stuff, um, um, there has been, you know, some solid sticks. The Marquesa is a solid cigar. Um, the Aganorsa stuff, like the 30th, and I haven't tried the 35th. 30th is fucking solid. I've tried that multiple sizes. Like, it's a solid cigar. So, I mean, even if they had one solid cigar, how could you hate the whole brand then? You know? Because Agon Orson makes solid stuff. So, I don't know. These are questions that I'm done defending them. I won't defend their past because they, they, were, they, they made some retarded decisions. However, it's kind of like um, Joe Pesci. Maybe you haven't heard him. I'm not retarded anymore. He's like, why don't you get your retarded shine box, motherfucker? So, you know, maybe somewhere, maybe you haven't heard. I, don't, I make brick and mortar gurkhas now. <clears throat> oh, look at this guy. When I left, before I went to the can, this guy was shining shoes. He made the best shoe shine gurkha you ever seen. So shiny, you see reflection. All right, it's all right, it's all right. Have a drink, have a drink, sit out. No, have a drink. It's on me. It's on me. I, mean, I just can't stress it enough. As a little man, you know what I'm saying, though? As a little guy. You know, as a little guy. With small arms and small forearms, you know. And, um... Um... It's not bad. It's not, it's not a bad cigar. For the worst of the cellar reserves to still be good. What does that say about the whole lineup? 
I'll tell you what, if I had, you know, a five pack of the 12, the 15, 15 Maduro, and then there was a 15, 10th anniversary. It doesn't count, but it counts. And then there was the 18, 21. So there's six of them. 10, I'm sorry, 12, 15, 15, 10th anniversary, 15. That's four. That's six of them. That'll be a great weekend. I'm telling you, it's the. <laughs> I've had them so many times in multiple sizes. I mean, you can shit on them if you want to, but that's stupid. Well, if you like Oliva cigars or anything that uses a lot of Ecuadorian wrappers, maybe this is something you'll like to try. I wish you the best. Get the fuck out of here. I hope you never come back. I hate this place. I don't even want you to come back to this lounge. If you're here, you're stupid.